Well, those existing home sales numbers are certainly weighing on the broader market today. Investors have been questioning whether stocks have run too far too fast. So are you one of those wondering where to put your money now? Our Zara Burton uses the Bloomberg Terminal to screen for stocks that still look cheap. And Zara, tell us first your parameters. How did you do the search? Okay, so what we looked at were stocks that where their PE multiples were trading below the S&P 500. So these are all S&P 500, meaning the large cap companies. We also looked at companies where the price to book ratio is below one. And those stocks that generally speaking have underperformed the broader S&P 500 so far this year. So then which companies made this list? All right, actually mostly energy companies. And that's not so surprising, especially because they've been under pressure. They had a great year in terms of those record oil prices that we got last year. So they're seeing some serious selling in the names. And look at the, those companies, especially the refiners. You're talking about Valero Energy and some other companies is like utility companies as well, like Duke Energy, DTE Energy, and Tegris Energy also on that list as well. And as you can see, even though the market is up so far this year, a number of these names are still in the red and big time in the red as well. But also, I screened even further and looked at not just what they are doing on a valuation basis, but the companies that will also see growth going forward into the future and talking about growth next year in terms of not just earnings but also in terms of sales top line growth has been hard to come by these companies are doing both and what we're finding is these companies that made the list one is a financial company nasdaq omx another one duke energy and tegris energy as well Pepco Holdings, this is a company that distributes electricity and nat gas to Northeast customers, and also Tesoro, Tesoro, one of the refiners, as we know, and Valera, the biggest U.S. refiner, won on that list. It's actually going to lose money this year, Lori. Next year, though, it's expected to see more than a 1,000% increase, over $1.70 in, um, in earnings. All right, Zara, very good. Hold there. Should you buy Valero in particular? We want to focus in on one of the stocks that you pointed out in your research. Brian Youngberg of Edward Jones is one of only six analysts who thinks the stock will outperform. Fifteen others say hold or sell. So, Brian, why do you like the stock? There he is live in St. Louis at his firm's trading floor. Good day. All right, good day to you, too. Uh, I do like Valero quite a bit. Uh, it is an aggressive holding, so investors should take that into account. But I think it's a great example of buying on the bad news. And the bad news for refiners this year is that uh, they're all going to roughly break even and some will actually lose money. But um, like you just talked about, I see earnings picking up gradually with the economy over uh, 2010 and beyond. And you know, I think uh, Valero is a premier name in the refining sector. And I think it's a very opportune time for investors that are patient and focus on the long term to take a look at Valero. And Brian, it's Zara here. Do you prefer Valero over, say, one of the other refining names like Tesor, like I just talked about? Well, we do not follow any of the other refiners. Uh, we follow strictly Valero uh, in the refining subsector within the energy side. You know, in general, we like Valero from the standpoint of its size and scale. It uh, lo has locations of refineries across the country, so some geographic diversity from that standpoint. Uh, they have a very good, strong cash balance. And over the long term, what they can benefit from is the fact that they can uh, produce or uh, uh, refine heavy oil more than most of its peers. And right now, that's not a, an advantage, but in normal times, it is. And so I think that's another reason why Valero can do very well here over the next uh, one, three, and even five-year time period. As people become more fuel efficient, though, there's this move, of course, to have the nation here in the U.S. become more fuel efficient. Don't you think that's going to be a headwind for a lot of the refiners, including Valero? It is an issue. Um, you know, we've gone from a kind of a boom to a bust now in refining in just about three years, and we do have a bit of an oversupply right now. Uh, I think you'll probably see some of the small uh, one-stop refiners uh, potentially close up shop here over the next two or three years because they just cannot weather the, the storm here. Uh, but I think Valero is well positioned uh, really to be a very strong survivor from that standpoint. The issue of uh, you know, demand uh, for gasoline getting back to 2000 levels, 2007 levels, which is when it peaked, uh, I think it will improve from this year going forward. Whether we get back to 2007 levels is pretty hard to say right now. But, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of dynamics that go into refining. Uh, but uh, I think what you want to do when you look at the refiners is focus on the, the large, very strong players. And I think Valero is by far the number one choice in, in that sector. Brian Youngbird, analyst Edward Jones, and our very own Zara Burton. Many thanks to the both of you.